Hi, this is Yvette from JSDD's Way Center. Today I'm going to work with you on printmaking with materials that you find around the house. Today we're going to use wax paper to make a plate to use uh, as mono printing plate to uh, make beautiful prints. So um, the materials that you'll need are wax paper. You'll need some type of paper. Uh, I'll be using multimedia paper, but you can use watercolor paper, um, cardstock. Uh, you can also use copy paper. It's a little thin and it'll wrinkle a little bit, but it'll work. So whatever paper you have at home, I'll be using acrylic paints. Uh, you know, look around, see what kind of paints you have. If you have um, tempera, hobby paints, um, any water-based paint that you might have around, um, you can use. You also need a variety of brushes and one thick brush, like about two or three inches um, wide and that'll be good for getting doing the backgrounds. You'll also need some tape, uh, some newspaper, newsprint to cover your table to protect it, and a ballpoint pen or a sharpie, and uh, ma materials that you might uh, use for texture. So look at like packaging, the plastic comes out packaging if it's an interesting texture or shape, you can use that. Um, you can use the bottle, bottom of a bottle to make a shape and uh, any other things you could find, screen or um, any textured item. So anyway, let's get started. I'm gonna show you a few examples of some prints that we're talking about. So this print was actually made on a foil plate and it works pretty much the same way wax paper does. But you can see that what we'll be doing is adding layers on layers of paint to create interesting um, color combinations. And you can see the textures coming through. That's from having some of the, the items that you'll be collecting um, showing through. I've used bubble wrap, I've used some um, puzzle pieces and some other textured pieces to make this print. Here is the foil plate with the, uh, the print on top. And you can see the marks on the foil plate were where I painted to make the marks on the print. And what's nice about this is that you can see where I painted and where the, the, um, where the next marks you might make will be. Here's another print. This print was made using parchment paper. And parchment paper um, is very slippery and it beads up the uh, paint a little bit. So that's where you see those, all those little dots of, of marks that were made, but it's quite nice and you can still use it um, with layers. And you can see I added some orange. Here's that plate. So next, I just wanna show you a video of the process so you'll get the hang of it and uh, hope that you'll Join in. We're going to start by making a plate out of this wax paper. This is the plate for our monotype print. We're going to use the wax paper to paint on and then make a print with paper that's a little heavy. This is a multimedia paper, a watercolor paper will do, but it's good to get um, paper that has a little bit of weight to it because we're going to be putting a lot of moisture on it. Um, you can use copy paper, but it'll get a little wrinkly. Okay, so we start with the wax paper. We wanna pull out a sheet that's gonna be bigger than the paper that we're using. That's good. And then we're gonna tape this down. I'm using a, a tape that doesn't, it's not too sticky. And you could use um, whatever tape you have around. But we're also going to tape the paper to the plate so that it doesn't move around too much. Today we'll be making multiple prints using the same piece of paper so you'll have a lot of different layers. And we wanna make sure that the plate doesn't move around and that the paper doesn't move around too much. So I've just taped down the plate and now I'm gonna tape down the paper. And we're just gonna make a little hinge on one side, like a door. 
opening and closing so we can make repeated prints. And we'll see how this works. Just make sure that tape is down really good on the wax paper. It can be, it can sometimes come up. Okay, so see we've made a little hinge. And this is how this will work when we're making our print. But in order to see where we're going to paint, we're going to just outline paper with a pen or a Sharpie. Both, both will show up on a ballpoint pen and a Sharpie will show up on wax paper. You just have to make sure that it's, you've got a good dark line. Now you can see the area that we're going to be painting. Okay. And that's, um, we're set up now to start our monoprint. So I'm gonna start with wetting my brush. Because the paints are very, very stiff, you wanna make sure that you have a little bit of water to mix in with them. And I'm gonna start with my lightest color and I'm just gonna dab it around my plate. Some there. You don't need too much, but you wanna make sure you have enough to coat the whole backside because I'm gonna use this color as my background color. And you can do a mixture of colors if you wanna use a blue, a light blue or a pink, um, light green, you can use any color. It's good though to start out with a light color because you're gonna be layering colors on top of it and you can build up as you go. Okay. And what I might do is while I'm doing my background, I might wanna add a little texture to it. So I'm gonna use that crinkled plastic and just kind of Push it around. And the wax paper itself has some texture to it too, so it'll be interesting. So let's make a quick print. And you wanna make sure you run your hand across the whole back, all around the print. All right, okay. And you can take one end up and make sure you've got the color that you want. One thing that's nice, it's kind of, you get this little texture and you can see that there's white areas and there's um, painted areas that you can, um, you know, fill in with other color. And I thought today I'd make something to do with um, spring. I was thinking about spring flowers, but not real spring flowers, something like fanciful, like a, um, like a Dr. Seuss type of flower, which is, if you remember the books, he always had these crazy kind of, kind of forms. So we're gonna use another piece of wax paper, so I'll fold like this, and we'll be able to use it for our palette. And it's really a good thing because the paint doesn't dry as quickly on, on this palette. So I'm, I think I'm gonna take a little bit of red. I'm gonna put all the colors down. A little bit of red, a little bit of blue, and more yellow. Okay. So now we have a whole bunch of colors we can mix together. I think I'm gonna start out with a little bit of a purple. And what I will add to this purple is some white so I can get a lighter color. There's some white. And that white added to that blue and red will make a very pretty light purple. Here. And make sure that you put your tops on tightly so that your paints don't dry out after you've finished with them. Okay, all right. So here I'm making myself a nice purple. I'm gonna use some more water. There we go. And I think I'm just gonna do some crazy like looking flowers, some will be spirals. Maybe I'll add some red, some yellow to the red and make more of a orangey color with the yellow and the red and the light and the white. And I'll make some of these like, sort of flowers that have little spikes sticking out of them. I'll put something along the bottom. Anything you want. Okay, so that's the start. 
when you feel like you have a good start, you can make a print because you don't want it to last too long. You just, you don't want it to go for more than like half a minute because you don't want the paint to dry out. Oh, okay, it's starting to come out. All right, I'm gonna wash my brush or maybe I'll just start with another brush. If you have the same brush, just rinse it out really well. And I think I'm gonna add some green. You can see how nicely the texture came out. The wax paper gives these little lines and it makes it very interesting. And that's what's kind of fun about monoprinting is that you can get these interesting textures and the marks that are made when you lift paint um, up with paper. It's just sort of this kiss and it opens up and you get these wonderful marks from it. Okay, so I think I want to add some more green and you can see how it's a mirror image of what you have and you can just you know add some other colors what's nice is that you get you can see where you've been I think I'll do another squirrel some more squirrels over here swirls here so you can see where there's a open space so I'm just gonna come over here okay I've added a little bit more to my print and I'm gonna show you this is by the way, this is called an additive process. We are adding color to the plate in bits and pieces and adding texture and uh, color. We're not taking anything away at this point. We're really just adding things. And I'm gonna, I feel like I have a little um, road here and I think I'd like to add a little bus. So I'm gonna add some water to my paint and make it a little little wetter and then I'm going to paint my bus and we're going to make a quick print with my bus because I really want this to come out really well. So let's see, we'll have them going in maybe this direction. I'm going to push down to get the paint on. Oops. Careful, you could go back, get more on. If you feel like you wanted a little bit more, I can finish off that bus add a little bit more to it and get the wheels on there. Okay, all right, and then I'm gonna print. And you can use anything. You could use a stamp, you can stamp it. Um, as long as you get enough paint on there though, because you wanna make sure that you get enough color to make an impression. And you want it wet enough so that it doesn't dry out. Okay, there it is. And you can also um, work on top of what you have um, afterward. If you want to work with some markers on top of your mono print, it's all it's all good. You can do that. You could do um, pencils. You could even uh, put you know, crayon on top of it or pastels. Um, you can you can keep adding to it and do whatever you want. I'm gonna get a little more green because I. I think I'd like to have some green in my picture. So you see I'm mixing the blue and the yellow and it's making this really pretty green. I'm gonna add some more water. I'm gonna go over these little spots with green. I think I wanted this to show up more. So you can go over things that you've done too. There we go. Let's try that. Normally, a lot of Vana prints are made with a press, an etching press, which is a very expensive piece of equipment that gives, puts a lot of pressure on the paper. But with this um, wax paper, oh, there's my green, it came out better. The wax paper releases pretty well, so you don't have to use a lot of pressure. And if you work wet, then you can um, make, you know, very nice prints. So I'm pretty happy with the way this come out, came out. I might work over it, but I just want you to take a good look. I hope you enjoyed this video. And please continue uh, doing using this process to create textures and stamps on your work. Um, 
mixing the colors, getting lots of different effects. The next class will be uh, on the subtractive process of this, and we'll be using the wax paper again. So I'll see you next time. Bye.